Hey, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. It's now time for Today in History. Now, we know that on April 26, 1994, South Africans, numbering about 22 million, had come out in the first ever multiracial parliamentary elections uh, to vote in uh, Nelson Mandela as president and, uh, of course, the ANC to lead the country. But we know that many years before then, Nelson Mandela served as a political prisoner in the country for 27 years on Robben Island Prison. And while in prison, he took great risk to send word out to the ANC and you know, people in South Africa, encouraging them to continue fighting against apartheid. He was allowed just one message or one letter once every six months in prison. And on this day in history, uh, June 10, 1980, um, he took great risk to send out this message. And uh, the ANC made it public on this day in history. And the message reads, unite mobilize, fight on, between the anvil of united mass action and the hammer of the armed struggle, struggle we shall crush apathite. So he sent out this message, uh, along with many others, he had been you know, writing and smuggling out to let South Africans, the blacks in South Africa, to know that Nelson Mandela still supports you, keep fighting against apathite, we shall overcome, and uh, just 10 years after that, in 19, uh, 1990, or a bigger part in 1989, um, F.W. de Klerk became South Africa president, and you know he said about the smuggling apartheid, lifted the ban on the ANC, uh, suspended executions, ordered the release of Nelson Mandela as a political prisoner, and this just set the ball rolling uh, for for the you know freedom of South Africa and the end of apartheid. So that's what happened today in history. The ANC released Nelson Mandela's statement urging South Africans to keep fighting for their freedom. If you had um, one letter every six months, what would you write? That's a good question. I, 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 I would really have to think about that. What would I write once every six months? Wow. And to whom? Because I'm not a political leader, so I'm not writing yeah. to a country. You'd probably write to your family, but what would you write? What would you request? If you had one letter and one request every six months, what would you request every six for? Months. I would have to think about that and get back to it. Why don't you put that on your Instagram like you always do <laughs> and, ask, and ask your fans? Very gross of corn. <laughs> they don't sell bald corn in this prison. Oh, my God. <laughs> anyway, let's move to um, away from South Africa now to 1967 to uh, what, what, of course, was once again uh, the Israel-Arab um, War or Arab-Israeli War. Um, of course, this has been going on for a very, very long time. started, you know, as early as 1948. Um, but uh, all of this started because of something called the Straits of Tehran, and that was, um, you know, a, a shipping route through which uh, business and uh, Israeli ships used to pass through to, of course, do uh, business in um, um, uh, Arab nations and the likes. Um, there was controversy because Egypt had banned Israeli ships from passing through the Straits of Tehran. Um, and so in 1948, um, there was, of course, uh, you know, um, issues with regards to that ban. And in 1956, um, of course, those issues continued. Israel invaded the Sinai Peninsula in Egypt to try to reopen the Strait of Tehran, but that failed. Um, and after that failed, you know, they waited, and of course, tensions started to rise again in 1967. Um, on the 5th of June in 1967, Israel once again, you know, uh, made an attempt at attacking, um, you know, of course, you know, trying to overturn that ban on their ships. They attacked Egypt terribly. Um, destroyed nearly the entire Egyptian air force. Um, and of course, you know, um, Syria and Jordan did get involved um, in this war. Um, it led to the death of about 20,000 um, um, you know, soldiers on the Arab side and about 1,000 on the Israeli side. Mm -hmm. um, this also, you know, led to the migration and, of course, uh, you know, residents of, uh, of uh, Egypt and, and um, you know, and Gaza and some of all those places running away from home. The conversations we've had lately about the Israel-Palestine war, you know, these are some of the things that also led to, you know, the eviction of, you know, Arabs from those places because of the victory of Israel um, in that time. And, of course, it also gave the Egyptian Air Force and Egyptian security forces, you know, bragging rights with regards to the victory in this six-day war. It started on the 5th, ended on the 10th. A, a ceasefire was agreed on the 10th of uh, June in 1967. Um, and all of this started, you know, with surprise airstrikes, you know, the Egyptian Air Force and Egyptian Army completely destroyed, you know, large percentage of all they had. I think about 900 planes were destroyed in that, in those, in these six days. 
about 20,000 lives were lost. You know, some people were declared missing and were never found. Israel only lost about 1,000 of their, you know, armed forces and, you know, citizens. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, it could be said that they won this uh, six-day war. But it has, of course, you know, been one of the many, 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 many times that there has been the Arab-Israeli crisis um, that, of course, still continues till this day. Mm. This, I remember studying about this six-day war in school, and it, it really is, you know, a very remarkable event that shaped the cause of the Arab-Israeli war. It was a third of the major conflict between Israel and the Arab nations. And it's just, you know, something to just think about just how disastrous the, the, the casualties and the losses were on the side of the Arab nations. I'm talking about Egypt, Jordan, Syria. 11,000 casualties on the side of Egypt, you know, many more with Syria, with Jordan. Um, in six days. You know, in, in just six days. You know, president of Egypt at that time, he, 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 he resigned, but he yielded to pressure, you know, demonstrations saying he had to stay back in office. You know, they all yielded to a United Nations uh, ceasefire. The conflict was over and, you know, led to so many refugees. They said about a million refugees from the Palestinian side that were now on the Israeli territory and now we're seeing a resurgence of the conflict, you know, occurred just a few weeks back. But one question we keep asking, would the Israeli-Arab war ever end? Ooh. Who can ever answer that? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't think it, I don't think it, you know, it will if, you know, uh, both sides don't get to be honest about the roles that they have continued to play to instigate and to create tension, um, you know, in, 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 in this crisis. You know, Israel needs to be honest with itself and accept that it has also been an instigator that has also committed, um, you know, serious and very, very serious crimes against humanity with, you know, concerning Palestine, regardless of whatever defense it has of, you know, we're defending our people from terrorists and all of that. And at the same time, Palestine and the Arab nations need to also own up, you know, to their own failures to, um, um, you know, stop the emergence of Hamas and other, you know, terrorist organizations that have taken, you know, advantage of this war to, you know, strike at Israel. Uh, there's arguments that Hamas only was started, you know, to defend the, you know, the Palestinian people since the uh, Palestinian security, you know, forces had failed, the Arab security forces had failed. So um, Hamas started as a way of defending, maybe like ESN, uh, as a way of defending, you know, the Palestinian people. Um, but both sides need to be honest, you know, and also be honest about the land that they are fighting over, you know, who truly owns it, you know, should it be a UN declaration, should it be a, um, you know, that, you know, the, the British gave you land, or should it be that we or these people have been here right from day one? Should it be based um, on a U.S. recognition yeah, of a certain territory? Uh, absolutely, you know, or should it be about the people who originally were there, and that, you know, that's their home, that's where they've always been. You can't come and push us out because somebody dashed you land. Did the person tell you that, you know, tell us that our land was being given away? So... Um, those are, you know, where there will always be issues and also, you know, the sides, you know, being taken here and there, you know, there's always going to be the, um, the, well, maybe not always, but there has continued to be the West, you know, taking sides with, with Israel. Um, also, you know, buying and supplying of weapons, you know, to Israel that are, they have used to continue to finance their war against Palestine. So it's a mess. It but, really but is a you, mess. When, when you look at, you know, wars that are fought throughout history, don't you think it's just you know, when you read about wars, how, how vain it, it all ends up being because the land will remain forever and human life has an expiry date. So people fight wars over land, they die, the land remains, their sons continue. So what really is the essence of wars in our society? I, I, can I really rationalize that? Because when you read history books, they tell you about how this is all for greed, all to amass territory, amass weapons, amass this and that, all these things that would, you know, outlive you. Really? It is still, it's still a fight for survival. Yes, you know, it might be seen as greed, but it's, it's still a fight for survival. And people need land to survive. They need, you know, shelter. They need a home, you know, to survive. They need a place to call home. Um, and so that's, that's what it is. Yes, they're the ones who fight because of, you know, their personal um, gains and, uh, um, and um, uh, wealth. They're the ones who, of course, invade other territories because they're trying to steal gold and steal oil. Um, there's those ones, but at the same time, True. there's always going to be those ones who, you know, would fight to protect their land and protect themselves. You would always have a place that you call home. You can't continue to be a wanderer, a roamer across the earth. You have to have a place that you call home. And if that's what Palestine has, you know, the, the Palestinians have seen as their reason for continuing to fight, um, because of years and years and years of being oppressed and being, um, you know, bombarded by, you know, Israel, um, without any other, you know, without, you know, countries in the world seeing their own side to, you know, the story, then... You know, the, the world will continue. 
regardless of what the reason is, um, the people would always, you know, have to fight to survive. Yes, you know, you eventually die and Mother Earth would always be here, regardless of how long it takes that these wars, how many human beings die, the Earth would still remain. Um, but in the, you know, cause of trying to also survive, not necessarily to outlive the Earth, you know, you have to fight, you know, if you, if you feel like you're being threatened. And that's what it's, it's life, basically. All right, if you say so. Well, that's what happened today in history. Uh, you're talking about the Six Day War of 1967, and I went back to the year 1980 in South Africa uh, to reveal a message that Nelson Mandela smuggled out of Robben Island prison with great risk. And uh, stay with us, we'll be right back.